Perplexity, an AI-powered search engine startup looking to take on Google, raising $74 million in a round led by some big names. Deidre Bosa spoke to its CEO for today's Tech Check. Hi, Dee. Hey, Tyler. So Google has been so far dominant for search for decades that few startups have been able to even raise significant capital to, to compete with them. Until now, that is. Perplexity, backed by some, as you mentioned, very high-profile investors, from Jeff Bezos to NVIDIA, believes the generative AI shift has led to a paradigm shift that creates a new opening in search. I spoke to CEO Aravind Srinivas earlier this morning on what's changing the age of Gen AI. Have a listen. Search has been about 10 blue links for the last, like, 20 years. And 10 blue links was always a hack. At the end of the day, people just wanted an answer. The concept of answer engine existed even in the late 90s when the internet was exploding. Ask Jeeves was an answer engine. In fact, like uh, many, many Googlers used to like come from Ask Jeeves and join Google at the time uh, because the 10 blue links was the concept that actually worked with the technology that existed at that time. Uh, and um, so what perplexity does is a paradigm shift in search. It's moving search from links to answers. He says it's all about the user interface. Google was born in the Internet era and, of course, navigated mobile very well. But its bread and butter search hasn't transitioned, he says, quick enough to the generative AI age. Srinivas says their AI search experiments thus far, from Google, that is, are cluttered. They're filled with ads. And there's too much cognitive overload for users. So he is creating a product in perplexity that is clean, minimal, simple, and relies on a number of large language models from GPT-4 to Anthropics Cloud to Google's Gemini and beyond. And guys, perplexity, it may represent the next act for generative AI at large. Last year, it was all about enabling the models, chips and cloud computing. This year, Srinivas and many others here in the Silicon Valley believe that we will see the rise of consumer applications. And mega caps like Google, they may not be the clear winners this time. How much you often hear in situations like this, and it used to be the Jack Welch rule, and that is that, the, that the, if you're not number one or number two in the business, you might as well get out of the business. You hear about first mover advantage, and that first mover advantage right now would seem to reside elsewhere. Right. And if you think about the advantage in the generative AI age being data, right, first party data in particular, um, nobody has more than Google. And that's why, you know, I asked him, are there going to be one winner, two winners in the space, just like Google has dominated search with 90 percent of market share? He says not necessarily, actually. He thinks that there's going to be more, but he thinks that Google is still going to be valuable with that first party data, which powers a lot of the large language models mm -hmm. out there. And he also thinks that they're going to make a big bet on cloud to kind of offset what may be happening. But this is really speaking to Wall Street fears about Google's position since the generative AI hype cycle began. Will it displace search? Will someone like a perplexity come up and do it better, maybe a better application built in the generative AI era? Or can Google move fast enough? Nobody denies that Google has developed the foundational technology that it's not necessarily behind, but can they create a product that users really want to use? And we know that OpenAI and ChatGPT was able to front run them on that on that uh, front. I just tried it out. I had a good answer for uh, how long for a sausage casserole. Give me little <laughs> links up top and it got it basically right. I wouldn't say it's majorly differentiated from the others. It still makes you go through the whole sign no. up rigmarole, uh, which early Google didn't but make you do. But that's the thing. It's not that differentiated. And I asked him about the commoditization of these large language models. And that's why he says that this year, it's going to be about the consumer applications. What Sequoia published a piece, the VC firm located here in the Bay Area, says that you either got to be close to the GPUs, the compute power, or the consumer. And he believes, and many others believe, that we're going to see companies be closer to the consumer this year, whereas last year it was all about the GPUs. All right. Thank you very much, Deirdre. We appreciate it. And I'm getting hungry. Deirdre Bosa.